More than 50% of people around the world experience workplace stress. In fact, this has been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, one study published in Nature found that there's been an increase in the prevalence of mental conditions across the world. The report concludes that one in three adults is suffering from depression, while one in four of us is suffering from anxiety. Now, of course, this can create all sorts of problems in our lives. I mean, it can inhibit our personal relationships, but it can also inhibit our ability to focus at work. Now, you might find yourself constantly swiping through Instagram, switching screens at your desk, washing the dishes, going for a walk throughout your entire day. Now, there are reasons to go for a walk. There are many good reasons to do so, but sometimes we might find ourselves participating in all sorts of almost involuntary activities because they are not cognitively demanding. It's so much easier to go for a walk than focus on a difficult task. It's so much easier to do the laundry, to do the dishes, than focus on a difficult task. And part of the reason why we prefer to do these easier tasks is because we might be feeling anxious. In this episode, I'll explore how anxiety inhibits our ability to focus, and also, more importantly, what we can do about it. If you like this show, take a moment to like, share, or subscribe, and leave a comment below What's it been like working through the COVID-19 pandemic and has it inhibited your ability to focus? Now, a little bit of stress isn't bad for us. In fact, acute stress, which we might feel before, say, we walk on stage to deliver a big keynote talk in front of 500 people, that can actually help release a little bit of adrenaline and help us to focus on the task at hand and absolutely crush that keynote. But it's when stress gets beyond that optimal point that it can start to feel overwhelming. It's at that point that it can start to be chronic and wreak havoc on every aspect of our lives. Anxiety, on the other hand, is about the anticipation of a negative future event based on uncertainty in our environment. And oftentimes when we're anxious, we could be anxious about something that may never come to pass. As Mark Twain was believed to have said, I am an old man and I have known a great deal of troubles, but most of them never came to pass. A 2019 study published in Frontiers in Psychology actually found that the presence of anxiety inhibits controlled attention resources. They also found that the more anxiety we have, the more disruption occurs. Interestingly, they also found that anxiety decreases working memory performance. Now, working memory is a small amount of information that's held in mind as you're working on an activity. And it is fundamental to doing difficult cognitive work, to solving problems. You can think of it as your own RAM, random access memory. You use it while you're completing a task, and once you're done, your brain is no longer using that piece of information. So what do we do about this? Well, you've no doubt heard about numerous interventions, whether it's therapy, meditation, exercise, getting some sunlight. But in today's episode, I wanna focus on the power of breathing. Now, breathing has been proven to help us focus, whether we're sitting behind a computer or whether we're standing behind a block of ice. Now, 2019 meta-analysis published in the Frontiers in Neuroscience found that breathing or slow breathing actively helps us reduce the heart rate and feelings of anxiety. Now, they defined slow breathing as less than 10 breaths per minute. The researchers found that, that slow breathing, one, increases heart rate variability, a sign of fitness that primes your body to tolerate stress and perform at a high level. Two, slows down the heart rate. Three, increases the number of alpha waves in the brain and decreases the number of theta waves. This essentially leaves us physically and mentally relaxed. And four, increases activity in the prefrontal cortex, which is fundamental to attention, impulse inhibition, and reason. Now, Andrew Huberman, a professor of neuroscience at Stanford, suggests that when we need to quell our anxiety in the moment, the fastest way to get there it's not meditation, it's not therapy, it's not going outside, it's not long breath work for a number of minutes, or slow breath work rather, but it is what he calls the physiological sigh. And this is something that you can do for maybe 20 seconds without anyone noticing, 
and help tap your parasympathetic nervous system, lower your heart rate, and get more mental clarity. So how does it work? Well, the physiological sigh is essentially defined as one long inhale through the nose, followed by another inhale when you don't think you can inhale anymore, and then a long exhale. Now what this actually does is it counteracts the body's signaling in response to a shortage in oxygen and an increase in carbon dioxide. That essentially signals the body's stress response. So when we partake in a physiological sigh, two inhales and then one long exhale, it effectively increases oxygen, decreases carbon dioxide and tells our body to start to relax. Now, if you think about it, this is a fantastic tool to use when we're about to go into a meeting, when we're about to give a keynote talk, whenever we're feeling some sense of stress, or maybe we've just sat down to our desk at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, and for whatever reason, we're feeling a little bit anxious, there's a background hum of anxiety, perhaps there's something happening later in the week that we're a little bit anxious about later that day, whatever it is, channel the physiological side. It's a fast way to tap science in order to help you feel more relaxed. And once you feel more relaxed, you gain access to more attentional resources, you gain access to more working memory. And with that, you can focus on cognitively difficult tasks and be your best self. Now the physiological side, it sounds like a productivity hack. I mean, it's literally something you can do in 20 seconds or so. And if you want to tap into 99 other productivity hacks, I've published an ebook called 100 Productivity Hacks. And those hacks come from my book, Time Rich, Do Your Best Work, Live Your Best Life, which you can download the first chapter of for free over at timerichbook.com. And that's also where you'll find the 100 Productivity Hacks ebook. And of course, I just want to finish this episode by stressing that if you are experiencing prolonged stress, anxiety, or feelings of depression, then please consult a mental health practitioner. I'll include some links in the description to some online resources as well. Until next time, I'm off to try and chop through a block of ice. See you later.